All right, guys, so I was asked a question um, about the reading that I signed uh, this last Tuesday. Uh, I believe that was October 26th. No, that was Monday. Anyways, um, it was on the section on two-dimensional motion in the textbook. Um, there were a few example problems, examples 3.1 through 3.6. Uh, this was a question I was asked about um, an extension on question 3.5. I believe this was on page 68. So in the original question, you had a ball that was thrown um, off a building that was 45 meters in height. It was thrown at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizon, right? And then you're just kind of solving um, for like time, velocity, just like a few different things, right? And the extension question is asking, okay, but what happens if you're throwing a ball off the same building, so 45 meters in height, Right, so 45 meters in height. Uh, but this time, right, you're throwing it at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizon. All right. Um, and so a couple things that we're given, right, we're given um, the X displacement, right? Uh, we already know the Y displacement from the previous uh, question in 3.5. And we're asked to find the time of flight, the initial speed, uh, the speed and angle of the velocity um, vector. Um, so this is a pretty difficult problem right at the start, right? Once you kind of get through uh, finding the time, right? So part A, uh, parts B and C become much easier, right? It's really just this first part um, that is really difficult. Um, so I'm just going to go over how to solve for time when you only know the X displacement and the Y displacement, right? Because in this particular problem, um, because it's being thrown at an angle um, below the horizon, uh, we can't assume that the initial velocity in the Y direction is going to be zero, right? So, right, this is all the things that we can know, right? We know that acceleration in the Y direction or sorry, acceleration, well, yeah, acceleration in the y direction is going to be just gravity, uh, right? We can always assume that. Uh, we know that the acceleration in the x direction is just going to be zero, right? Objects in the x direction are just moving with constant velocity, and we know displacements. So we only know, you know, two things for each of the directions, x and y. And as I've you know mentioned before, if you know three variables for each of these, um, you can solve for the remainder, right? But in this case, we only know two. So we have to do a lot of kind of algebraic gymnastics in order to solve for time. All right. So here we go. All right. So we can kind of establish that our um, initial velocity um, at this angle, right? We're just going to state that that's going to be just VO, right? Um, we know that if we want to calculate, um, time or initial velocity, we have to just kind of plug in our formula. So we know that if we're trying to solve for VO in the X direction, right, kind of over here, uh, we know that generally, right, our formula would be, right, initial velocity X uh, times time, right? If you know the velocity and you know time, right, you can find distance. In this case, we don't know either of them. Um, so what we can do here is we can use a little bit of trig, right? So we know in this case, right, if we know the hypotenuse, which is VO, um, and we're trying to find for this side, which would be the adjacent side, right? This would be cosine, and let's put our angle in, times T. All right, so the x displacement is going to be equal to the velocity in the x direction times cosine 30 times time. All right. Uh, similarly, for the y direction, all right, this is going to be initial velocity in the y direction um, because this is opposite of the angle, right? It's going to be sine 30 times time and then running out of space here but then this will be also minus uh, one half gravity times time squared. All right, so that, that should all be together. All right, so right now we wanna solve 
for time. And you can see, right, this is a little bit annoying right here. I'm just, I'll say that up front. This is not a question I would give you guys on a test just because this is such like a math algebra question and just gets kind of away from the physics of it. All right. So let's figure this out for um, our x direction, All right? So we got, I'll just rewrite it down here, right? 57 equals B O X cosine 30 um, times time. Let's rearrange this a little bit to where we get VOX times time equals um, 57 divided by cosine 30. Okay, so now that we have that, actually, one thing we can do too, should have mentioned this, is we can actually we don't need to necessarily indicate the initial velocity in either of these directions, right? Because we are kind of basing off this initial velocity. So it's just VO, all right? So what we have here is we have VOT equals 57 over cosine 30, all right? Uh, what we can do is we can plug this in. into our formula for the y direction. So right, I'm just going to rewrite this. So we had 45 equals VO sine 30 times time minus 1 half G times time squared. All right, now we're going to uh, plug in, all right, this formula for VT down here. So we're gonna get 45 equals 57 divided by cosine 30. Times sine 30 minus one half GT squared. All right, now, One other way to write this, right? If we have uh, sine 30 over cosine 30, uh, really what we're getting, just a new color, is this would be the same as um, just 57 tan 30. Okay. All right. Now for this next part, uh, we are going to we're going to move our forty five over into our equation. So I'm going to get zero. Well, actually, here this is again. This is kind of the annoying part, right? Remember your displacement, displacement in the y direction. Should have stayed this so all right we're talking about displacement displacement is going to be right your starting point minus your initial point so this would be uh let's say zero minus 45 all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add 45 to both sides right, so this would actually be negative up here All right, I'm going to add 45 to both sides. So I'm going to get 0 equals 45 um, minus, this is actually a minus sign here, because right, our velocity is in the negative direction. Sorry, I have to go back and do my signs. Again, a lot of these times, I just, I personally forget, right, when things are moving in the y direction, it's always going to be kind of negative velocity. So I have to go back and do my signs. And again, sometimes 
you can correct yourself, right, when you're going back after the fact. And, you know, if you're getting numbers that are positive and they should be negative or negative when they should be positive, you can go back and kind of look at, did you do your signs correctly? All right, so 45 minus 57 tan 30 minus one half gt squared. All right, and then again, at this point, right, I wanna solve for time. So I'm gonna rearrange this whole equation so that I can get uh, time by itself. Um, I, I, I can go through the individual steps, right? I'm going to add, right, um, one half gt squared to both sides, right? I'll multiply both sides by two to get rid of that one half and then divide by g um, and then square root the whole thing. So uh, what I'm going to end up with, I'm going to end up with uh, t time equals the square root of two times 45 minus 57 tan 30 all divided by my acceleration which again in this case is now positive right because i added um one half gt squared to both sides so that became a positive number all right um but yeah and you just calculate this all out And then you should get time equals 1.57 seconds. So, huge pain. Shouldn't see a question like that on the AP exam or in any tests that I give you. So, just real quick, going back through this problem. Okay, so all we knew were our displacements. Again, I had to go back and just kind of fix my signs. I uh, remember it's moving downward, so the displacement in the y direction is negative, to remember that, which also means that the velocity is negative. Um, again, I know my formula for uh, displacement in the x direction is going to be displacement equals uh, velocity times time. Because uh, I don't know velocity or time, right? I can relate it to my hypotenuse. Um, so it's just going to be velocity cosine 30 times time. Um, and then the y direction is going to be displacement equals velocity sine 30 times time minus uh, 1 half gt squared. Actually, and once again, just indicating that velocity is in a negative direction, so that should be a negative. Once I know that, right, I'm going to solve for the x direction, right? So it's going to be 57 equals uh, velocity cosine time. Uh, rearrange that, so I get velocity time equals 57 over cosine 30. I'm going to plug that in into my formula for the y direction, right, which was negative 45 equals negative VO sine 30 times time minus 1 half GT squared. Uh, plugging in my x formula into my formula for the y direction, right? The VOT becomes 57 over cosine 30. Uh, when you have sine 30 over cosine 30, right? Same, it's just going to become a tan 30. So I end up with a negative, this should all be negative, negative 57 tan 30, all right? Remember your displacement uh, is ultimately, right? You're starting, um, or your, really your final displacement minus your initial displacement. So, all right, my initial displacement was 45, uh, final was zero, right? So that's where I'm getting that negative 45 from, adding that to both sides. So I'm left with zero equals 45, uh, minus 57 tan 30 minus one half gt squared. All right, at this point, I can then solve for t, right? Um, just because I'm only left with one variable, so go through your algebraic steps to get isolate t by itself. You end up with t equals square root of 2 times 45 minus 57 tan 30, all divided by 9.8, right? And then should get time equals 1.57 seconds. Knowing that, you should then be able to solve for uh, the initial speed and speed to angle of the velocity, right? Because now we know our time is 1.57 
All right, and now once you know three things, right, you can solve for the error once, and right, then solving for initial velocity in this direction becomes much simpler.